guys well as the story goes back in the summertime I was actually running up to the steam show which I also cover on the channel and they do a lot of swap meets in that area around this time of the steam show so I was driving back from the steam show the one night and I saw this beauty sitting over there on the swap meet table so I hurried up and pulled off the road and went to check this thing out I've uh, I've heard of these things but never actually seen one in person so I think I managed to pick this thing up for like 150 bucks or something like that. Um, it's been a few months now, my memory is getting hazy. I buy too much crap. But uh, what this is, as the title says, it is a gas powered jackhammer. But it's actually more than just a jackhammer, this is also a rock drill. So as you can see, it came in the original wooden crate. And I'm not sure how to say this name, I know it's Swedish, but it's P I O N. J A R. I don't know if it's Pionjar or something like that, but uh, it's a Pionjar 120 model. And yeah, that's the extent of everything I know about it. It didn't come with any drill bits, but it did come with a couple of clay spades. and several breaker points. Uh, this one here looks like it's seen the most use. There's three other ones in there just like this. So I didn't spend any time on this thing when I got it home from the steam show. I think I pulled it out of the crate, I threw a little bit of gas in it, and I tried to get it started, and she wouldn't do anything. So. It's cold and snowy outside, it's winter time, I can't get anything else done, so we'll spend a little bit of time in the shop today, and hopefully we'll get this bad boy going. So one thing I'm disappointed to see here, and I don't remember noticing before, the handle on the side here is cracked all the way through, and I can't tell if there's like a core in there that's still going to hold on, if the plastic finish is breaking or what, but uh, I have a plastic welder I haven't tried out yet, maybe we'll try and fuse that back together. Let's get this thing out of the box, huh? Yeah, things are not looking good here for this little handle on the side. And that's kind of the handle I think you're supposed to use when you're drilling horizontally with this thing. but. Will I ever actually drill any holes with this thing? I have no idea. I can really only see myself using it as a jackhammer. Because, um, let's face it, having a jackhammer that's completely cordless and portable would be pretty darn handy. Um, hey guys, real quick, I just want to stop the video here and say I was editing this and I listening to myself talk there and talking about a cordless jackhammer. I saw this jackhammer down at the uh, Utility Expo in Louisville, Kentucky when I went down there with Dirt Perfect and it looks really cool and the sticker shock though I had to look it up I'll stick with my hundred and fifty dollar two-stroke one here any day alright back to it I have had the misfortune of being around plenty of jackhammer work when I worked construction I ran 90 pound hammers till I couldn't feel my fingers which is about 10 minutes but <laughs> I actually ran them for days on end it's not a good time but when you need one you need one So unfortunately, we are missing the air cleaner from this unit, which is a real bummer. 
and I think the air cleaner also functions as a choke. It's a bit of an odd setup. So this little arm here is supposed to keep your air cleaner assembly in place there. It's like a cartridge that slides down inside of there. I've looked around online with no success. I can't find any parts or information on this thing. Um, this deal here is something to do with your idle or your mixture settings. I think it's like a, a, a main jet on your carburetor actually. And this guy here is your throttle. So when you're hammering away, you're pushing down on that thing for more throttle to keep on hammering. And of course you got your fuel cap here. Lastly, you got your rope here for your pull start. And let me tell you, oh, she has got some compression. This thing is not for the faint of heart. I'm sure it is just a joy to try to uh, start this thing. So as I said, back in the summertime, I could not get this thing running. I do believe the carburetor is probably gummed up for many years of sitting. I think this thing was made in the early 80s maybe, and there has doesn't seem like it's had a ton of use. It's not super banged up or anything like most jackhammers are. So anyways, I think we're gonna tear into this thing today and try to get the carburetor torn apart and cleaned up and hopefully get this baby running. One of the really cool things that came with this unit was all the original paperwork here. So this even has the list price on it. So $928 was just for the, uh, the actual unit itself, none of the bits back in the day some marketing flyers and stuff I think their little picture here is kind of funny it's like all the brochures and stuff from uh, yeah pretty neat I like I like some of this old marketing stuff it's just uh, kind of neat to see a bygone era of construction which is kind of what I focus on. Bygone. I guess this Cobra is like the bigger model. And then I have like the medium model. And then there was one that was smaller too. Yeah, this is the smaller one, the Pico. So I guess it's pretty teeny. Anyway, we could go through this for 20 minutes. But basically the point I'm trying to make here is... Uh, it shows the breakdowns of this whole unit in several places and the carburetor is like right underneath this cover so that's where we got to get to today sidebar um, does anybody know how to get pages apart that are stuck together um, without destroying them because I started to try to force them apart here and I started separating the paper so I don't want to do that but every page in this thing is glued together and uh, anyways, we can you can see what the air filter is supposed to look like there anyways, I can't get this book apart, and this is the one that I can most benefit from. So if you know any tips or tricks to getting pages apart like that, let me know. Yeah, well, so there's could be part of our issue that fuel line coming from this little dial thing up here broken off, and I didn't feel any resistance. Oh, by the way, I guess you wouldn't. It's just completely disintegrating. There is two reed valves up here. That's an interesting design here. Well, exactly what I didn't want to happen is starting to happen here. I'm having to tear the whole thing apart. and replace more than I bargained for. Hmm. Why don't you want to come apart? Maybe I have to ask nicer. 
Will you please come apart without me breaking you? I don't want to break you. I feel like this pool start needs to come out. I'm seeing a lot of oxidation on it though. Which probably isn't going to make it any easier to get out. I was really hoping that we were going to be able to get to the carburetor through the top here, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yep, I will say that uh, this is turning into one of those things that I don't like to disassemble when you have to remove everything to get to the one thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, why couldn't they make this a little bit more compartmentalized design to where this would come apart without taking this apart, you know? Why? Especially if you get to something like the carburetor that you know is going to gum up at some point. How am I getting irritated here? There's another design that either I fully don't understand or is stupid. Which one do you think I'm going to go with? <laughs> now don't I feel stupid. So after playing around here for a half an hour trying to dive into this thing and find a carburetor buried down in this thing somewhere, I decided I'd go ahead and look for that uh, diagram for the breakdown and see if I could figure out how to get this thing apart better to get to the carburetor. I stumble across this passage here and I guess perhaps I should have done a little bit more of that fancy reading stuff before I started breaking things loose. This machine has no carburetor. The fuel mixture is controlled by a manual needle valve which must be adjusted for the proper fuel mixture by the operator. See starting instructions. So I would say let's hurry up and throw this thing back together and uh, quit making a fool of myself here but in the process of dismantling it I did find that the fuel line was broken and that may be the reason probably wasn't starting before so I still have to get the fuel tank off of this thing and I think we're like one and a half steps away from that point so to get the fuel tank out here we got to take this side of the case off um, to do that we have to take off the one-way bearing for the pull starter, which should just unscrew with that hex right there. There's a couple more bolts down in here. We'll break those things off. And then this guy here, this shroud, needs to slide up further, but it can't because it hits something over on this side. So I might have to crack these two big nuts loose here on either side to allow it to uh, slide up enough to get this thing clearance to lift up off of here. Alright, so I had to loosen up these two nuts down here and kind of drive off this foot assembly. I'm trying not to completely disassemble it because uh, I just don't want to deal with any little pieces that are going to come apart in there. But anyway, I did that so that I could get this thing to slide down far enough to clear these little studs here in the housing. And we are clear on both sides now, so this thing should lift up off of here. Should. This might be the first Swedish thing I've ever worked on. I'm going to put it right up there with German engineering. Well done, but overdone. All right, I got that off of there. Look at that fuel tank. Boy, that's unique, huh? Try to find a replacement for that guy. Good gravy. Anybody ever seen a fuel tank look like that? Right, so after, after a whole bunch of shaking there, I managed to get the fuel filter stone out of the tank. At least that's what I call these things. Basically what this thing is, is a weight. Uh, you can see that fuel line just disintegrating, falling off of there. It's our lovely ethanol fuels that we have today. Anyways, what this does 
is uh, it hangs down in the fuel tank and has a fuel line running off of it. So it's just a pickup and it comes out this hole in the tank over here. And it's the same way chainsaws and weed whackers all work uh, the same way. <clears throat> but anyways, this thing's got some gravity to it. And that way, that no matter which way you rotate the machine, uh, this thing goes to the lowest point and stays down in the fuel. These things can be quite the pain to reinstall. So basically you have to fish fuel line through this little hole here at the same time try to get it pulled back to the entrance here and out that way so that you can install this guy onto the fuel line and then shove it down in there and get it to where it's supposed to dangle in the tank it can be quite an ordeal all right well in typical fashion for me i forgot to turn on the camera before i pulled the uh filter down inside the tank there but basically what i did was shove all this new fuel line into the tank and then take a piece of wire here with a hook bent on the end of it and uh, fished it into the tank until I hooked on the fuel line, pulled it out, stuck the filter on the end of it, dropped her in there, and then pulled all the fuel line back. And now I just have to feed enough line in the tank so that the weight can go all the way down around to here. That way, no matter which position the machine is in, the, uh, the weight will still be in the fuel. So also, before I reinstall the tank here, I put some good pipe dope around this uh, hose because the OD of the hose did not fit quite as snugly in the tank as the original did. It probably would have been okay, but uh, it's just a little extra insurance there. Well, I got it all back together here. I put a uh, spade bit in it just to get it up at a good height here to work with. We'll throw some gas in it and see if this thing isn't going to start. Also, I did manage to go on eBay and I scrounged up an air filter housing here, so we should have that in a few days here. Okay, so I got gas in it now. I got to read over these starting instructions again because they're a bit odd. This is like this little dial here acts like a needle jet in a carburetor, but as we learned, there is no carburetor. So you have to set this thing to a certain position, um, and then I assume we'll need to choke it. And as I said earlier, the air filter housing is what acts as the choke. So I'm just gonna use this socket I have taped up here to cover off that port, and that'll act as our choke for right now. And hopefully that'll draw some fuel up into this thing and it's gonna fire off for us. All right, well, after studying the starting instructions on the directions here, this thing does seem like it might be a little bit difficult to start. <laughs> um, so basically, this is a fuel control valve, they call this. So you open it up all the way, and then somehow you're supposed to hold the throttle wide open and pull it at the same time while it's choked. And remember, this is our choke. So if the engine spits and sputters a little bit, that's good. That means we're getting some fuel, and then I'm supposed to open the choke. So remove that, and then pull it again until it starts. So we'll see if that happens. So yeah, let's uh, give her a shot here. Since we have all new fuel line on this engine, it would probably take a little bit of pull in here to, to get this thing to fire over. It's got to suck up all that fuel through that big long fuel line. Huh. This thing has got some compression. It's hard to pull. 
I'm gonna be very worn out if I keep trying this, so I'm gonna go ahead and cheat, use a little bit of ether here. Don't shoot me. Alright. Ooh. Let's try that again. Well, we know it does run, if only we can get fuel to it. So after it starts, I guess you're supposed to start slowly turning this fuel valve shut until it runs smooth. So try to do that without stalling it now. Oh lord, this thing's hard to pull over. pretty good there. butter now so I opened it up here so we can see the fuel line and you can see there's big air bubbles in the fuel line here so uh, that's why it's running for a moment and that's sputtering out all right you guys see that the fuel goes right up to that valve but it doesn't stay there I feel like that should be a check valve or something so the fuel doesn't flow back to the tank but it's not
Well, that goes the carry handle. Oh, that's gone. Dang it. Good Lord, I'm gonna pull something in my shoulder if I keep doing this. All right, well, I'm pretty sure I'm like tearing something in my shoulder uh, pulling this thing so many times, so I gotta give myself a break here. And I think that part of the reason we're not able to get this thing running correctly is because we don't have enough vacuum. Uh, the air filter will provide a level of vacuum to keep drawing fuel into the engine. And so I was kind of metering it by shoving the rag in there a little bit, and it seemed like that was doing something, so. All right, it's actually like a week later or so, and I think like I mentioned earlier, I was able to track down an air filter housing off of Flea Bay, and uh, it finally just showed up yesterday. I did not find the actual foam element that's designed for it, so I just went up to the uh, hardware store and grabbed a couple little teeny air filters that would fit in there jammed them in there they're creating a good seal so we're not gonna get any dirt down into the intake now um, so basically I hope this works so this little arm right there retains that and that's fully choked that's off choke so yeah we'll try it I'm supposed to open the fuel needle and then I guess just pull it playing around with it here and hopefully find a sweet spot where I can keep this thing running I'm giving it throttle and uh, nothing's happened it's kind of killing it out as soon as I give it throttle so yeah but it's still cool it runs that's the uh, the best I've had it running yet I'm sure you can tell we got a little bit of a soft spot here so I'm gonna try to hammer hammer the concrete up as I'm adjusting things here and trying to get it to run a little better but uh yeah see what we can do
hot diggity. Uh, I still don't think it's quite right because the throttle's not working, but uh, man, it works good. Whew. It's been a while since I used the jackhammer. This thing wears you out. Fat boy's out of shape. Okay, pretty excited about that. I'm back in the shop now. Um, so the thing does run and it does function and it does do what it's intended to do. Um, but I spent some time off camera playing around, trying to adjust a couple things and uh, see if I could get it to work, you know, with the throttle the way I think it's supposed to work. But it uh, doesn't appear that I can. So, well, guys, I guess that about wraps up this video. I am overall very happy with the performance of the old jackhammer here. Uh, I'm not quite sure that I have it working exactly how it's supposed to. I can't seem to make this throttle function. You know, it seems like every time you give it gas, it dies out, which, uh, you know, it's getting plenty of fuel because I can give it so much fuel with this adjustable needle that it also stalls out that way. So it's not that. So uh, if you guys have experience with these jackhammers and you understand what I'm doing wrong, help me out because clearly I do not. Let me know where my stupid is showing at because I'm missing something here. I played some played around with it off camera for a while and I can't uh, can't get it to make any difference. As it is with uh, most of the things I'm working on on this channel, you'll be seeing this thing in some upcoming videos shortly. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be quite handy to have around here. You never you never know when you need a jackhammer, but when you need one, you need one. Last but not least guys, if you like the video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button on the video. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And if you're not already, be sure you tickle that subscribe button so I can see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.